Hello, hello, hello everyone. I hope everybody is fine and uh, you're still keeping faith with everybody. Um, we are continuing with our topic, that series, uh, I think it's on day part four now, which is we are going to need more wine. More wine. Yesterday we uh, spoke about the timing that the fullness of time that everything in life happens at a certain sequence, certain rhythm, certain time, certain season, that we shouldn't force any season. Allow the season to happen. Don't force anything. Don't force a relationship. Don't force uh, things that are not yet yours because you might get it, but you might lose it just as quickly. So sometimes we need to pray, work, for the maturity to be able to maintain that which and multiply that which we have received the blessings. So don't force things that are not yet your time. Allow time to process even though sometimes it may feel that it has moved quicker, it has um, it not moved quicker, it has delayed, but nonetheless allow time to happen. It is ultimately good for your benefit um, because one of the things is that there are times when blessings become a curse. That is when they actually kill us. You may receive something, you've prayed for it, but you did not have the maturity to maintain it, that that blessing becomes a curse. Similarly to the, we spoke about the, the, the young man who took his father's wealth, inheritance, went to a far country, economy took a downturn, he lost everything and he had to come back home. So what he thought was a blessing, it actually ended up being a curse. So let us be very careful about rushing things. Don't rush things, first things first. Allow time, allow the process, work on yourself, work on things and work towards it, right? And multiply. So today we're still on John chapter two, but we are focusing on, um, <clears throat> on verse five. Uh, so, Mary, after the wine has run out, goes to her son, Jesus, and says, Hey, the wine has, you know, run out. Do something. Jesus says, Hey, <laughs> ain't my problem. Basically, it's like, this is none of my business. My hour has not come. But <clears throat> uh, Mary goes to the people, goes to the servants. And then she says to them in verse 5, Whatever he says to you, do it. Now, this is very interesting, very interesting now. Um, and this is a act of faith that in everything we do in our life requires faith. Now, faith is, 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 is basically, as somebody has uh, tried to put it in layman's terms, is having a title deed to the land that you don't yet possess. That's what somebody says, says having faith is possessing a title deed, having seen the title deed with your name of a land that you don't yet have. And for somebody, I can even say further, it's like already having a house uh, built, furniture, uh, everything, and you still don't have anything, but you believe that you ever received it from afar. Uh, that, that, that is, in essence, what faith is, is seeing the invisible. Uh, grabbing the the impossible it's it's having something it's having hope as 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 as, as the bible says now faith is the substance uh no nah. oh, how, how does it go you know sometimes anyway i'm not i'm not gonna quote that verse but basically that's what it says and faith comes from hearing the word of the lord basically now it is so interesting how mary behaves here she goes to her son, whom she knows has the power. And funny thing, um, Mary, according to what we know, has not seen Jesus perform anything. He had not seen Jesus perform any miracle. No miracle whatsoever. Um, Jesus is according to scripture. But we, we, the thing is sometimes with, with, with the Gospels, they are not an autobiography or biography of Jesus. They just depict, they pick the three years of his life, three and a half years, and that is where 
they focus mostly on they don't focus on his childhood they don't uh, talk about what did he do in his um, uh, 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 childhood his teen years you know we only see him we see Jesus as a, as a, as a babe being born um, in Bethlehem and then after that we meet him at 12 years old when they went to the temple and then they left Jesus behind he 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 stays and argues with the teachers of the law uh, doctors of the law and the, the, the priests at the temple they go back and then the next time we see Jesus again of course when he is about to be baptized that's so that's all we know of his formative years we we don't know anything else that the, the scripture is silent on that and so there is one possibility that Mary knew of course Mary knew who Jesus was going to be or who Jesus was uh, I mean even before her birth uh, before his birth uh, you know the angels have visited you birds are save of the world you know all of that and I like to think that um, even throughout his child <clears throat> his childhood I like to think there was uh, many divine visitors to the family I don't think that God was silent throughout the the childhood and the upbringing of Christ I think there were now and again divine visitors this is just my belief I have no theological basis I have no sources I, this is just my belief because I, I doubt that <clears throat> a prophecy magnificent uh, God visits Mary immaculate conception secondly um, Elizabeth confirms it uh, Simon and Anna uh, in his birth to dedicate him that they hey this is the salvation when Jesus was born a whole lot of them the three wise men um, the visit to Joseph go to Egypt come back uh, all those things those those were wonderful signs and I like to think I refuse to think that that is the only time God spoke to them I believe that throughout the ages the years God communicated with them because God has always been in the business of communicating with human beings. So there is ever, never a time that God is silent. If God is silent, it's because he has said that, do this and make sure you do it and I'm always going to be with you. So I believe throughout, God was visible. God was a visitor. There were assurances that it was with him. So anyway, so I like to think that when Mary tells these guys, the servants, because he speaks to Jesus, Jesus says, this is not my time yet. And then she switches and then goes to the servant and says, <clears throat> whenever he tells you, do it. Now, this is the thing with faith. In order for faith to, to be manifested, in order for faith to, 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 to have an impact, in order for things to move, it, it, it means there has to be an action, there has to be a command, there has to be a processing, and there has to be an action. So the command is what God tells you. There is a divine word that says, this is what I'm telling you. And then, of course, there's a processing that happens in the hearer of the word. Like I said, faith uh, comes from hearing the word of the Lord. And then the third part is executing, executing that which you've been told to do. So in order for a mountain to move, it, 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 you have to believe there is faith. God told you that this mountain can move. Therefore, you believe it. You believe by seeing the mountain already moved and then uh, it would actually happen. So what happens here, Mary tells the servants and says, uh, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Do not question it. Do not doubt it. Do not theologize with it. Do not have opinions. Do not say, hey, I think we will be busy. Do not say, but it has not yet been, it's not been done. What is this guy trying to do? You know, whatever he tells you because he knows what's going to happen before we even do it. So sometimes in our lives, it so happens. And I, this is a belief and this one is actually backed by scripture. Whatever our dreams and 
aspirations and who we are going to be in the future. That comes because God has already given us a snapshot. He has already given us a highlight what our lives are going to be like. Now, in, in the life of Joseph, for instance, he had these dreams, visions of who he was going to be in the future. But the thing is with Joseph, he just didn't know how it's going to happen. Given his birth order, given that he had older brothers, and on top, and worse, made it worse, he had older brothers. If he had older sisters, he would have felt, okay, maybe I have a chance because these are sisters and in our patriarchal system, then I stand a chance to be the eldest son. But he had older brothers. And so for him to be a ruler of Israel, it was impossible because he had older brothers. Um, so he didn't know how he was going to do it, but God showed him more than once that you are going to be a great person. In fact, you are going to be greater than your parents. To the point that even his father said, like, man, don't be sharing these things. <laughs> you know, Jacob was like, hey, dude, this thing is going to get you killed, you know, uh, and stuff like that. I'm just paraphrasing. Sometimes my imagination runs wild. So, and that's the thing sometimes with God. He never shows you the whole story. He never tells you the how. He tells you the end, that you're going to be good. Like, I know the thoughts that I have for you. Um, uh, the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you, you know, not to harm you. So when God says, I know, for I know the plans that I have for you, He never tells you, okay, this is the plan. This is how we're going to execute. He just says, plans of prospering, of to have a future. Uh, and, and, and so sometimes that's the difficult thing about believing in God because you would have a vision, you'll have a dream of being somebody. Maybe you want to be successful, have a, a successful marriage, have this, this, and this. Do something uh, amazing. Be the one first person to cure cancer. Be the first person to cure uh, hypertension and diabetes and so many other these diseases, you know. And God will tell you, who give you that vision, but He will never tell you how. He will never tell you that there will be hoops and hoops uh, that you have to jump. That will be heartaches. You'll be you'll run out of things. You'll be hungry. Sometimes you'll be homeless. You you go through all these things. There'll be betrayal. All of those things. Sometimes God does it, never tells you. He just says you are going to be great in the future. So it is sometimes very imperative when God has given you that vision in spite of the hardships that you will go through because you will go through these hardships. And another thing about believing in God, it does not mean that hardships are suddenly eliminated. It also does not mean that hardships are suddenly, you are immune to it, that you live in the bubble. Hardships are going to be there. You are going to struggle. Things are going to be bad. But it does not mean that God still has given up on the vision. Or the plan that he has for you. The plan is still there. It's just for you to believe that it's happened. So it is the same thing that Mary says. says. And Mary was speaking from a personal testimony. You know, sometimes things are able to happen in your life because you need to have a personal testimony. For me to believe that, to have faith. Faith is because God has done something. And I know that when he says he's going to do it, I have a personal testimony. So Mary has had a personal testimony with God, with divine. She had because she was told she was going to uh, have a, be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. She was told everything that was going to happen and everything that God told her, it happened exactly. So when she went to the servant, she wasn't going on a theory. She was going to tell them on a prayer. It says, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Don't question it. Not that you don't have a brain to question it, but this particular things, there are things that you shouldn't question. Just take it as it is and put God to the test. So sometimes in life I know it's difficult. It's very difficult to believe when things are hard. You know, sometimes life will show you flames. You run out of wine. You are running out of time. You need the wine. And it seems there is no way to get it. Things are tough. But at the same time, God has made you a party and certainly, suddenly things have just run out. You know, you're no longer the flavor of the month. Things are just not coming together. Things are going wrong. You thought by now things are going to be okay. But this is when faith, it is the rocket fuel. 
It is the fire that, that lights you, that, that gives you the, the power to go on. And that is when you go back to say, what did God say concerning me? Did he, did he not say, I know the plans that I have for you? And that is why we have to have faith. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. That whatever you have not seen, that, that has not been made visible to everybody else, but God has made visible to you. That is when God says, do it. Don't doubt it. I know it's hard to doubt. And, and sometimes God gives you a vision when you have nothing to hold on to. He gives you a vision of success when the, everything else is falling apart, is crumbling apart. But God says, whatever I'm telling you, do it. So I hope in our lives, whatever you may be going through, whatever uh, flames you're going through, you've run out of time, you've run out of wine, um, your hour is not yet coming, uh, you feel like I'm reaching a certain age, I'm not, I don't have a kid, I'm married, not even anybody's looking at me that way, I'm not employed, you know, things are just not coming together. But I've come today to tell you that whatever he tells you, even if he says wait a bit longer, wait. If he says do this.